you do just a little bit of uh, what I refer to as teaching preaching. And uh, uh, but then, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, in First Thessalonians uh, chapter number five, and and uh, 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 got a subject on my heart this morning, and I, I, I need to give credit where credit is due. Uh, here a couple of weeks ago, uh, I can't remember if it was before or right after that I had surgery, and Andrew and I were texting back and forth, and he asked me. Uh, a couple of questions on this subject and, and we were kind of going back and forth on it and I told him I said I think maybe we need to do a little study on this topic and uh, uh, so uh, I, after that he, he uh, sent the, the, the text and asked me the questions and uh, different things I couldn't get hold I couldn't get I let go of it uh, the Lord just kept it on my heart and on my mind and it has been for a couple of weeks, but and so, uh, uh, but if you have your uh, Bibles again, First uh, Thessalonians chapter number five, and uh, then we'll and we'll read just uh, two verses of Scripture and take a thought uh, from a verse this morning. But First uh, uh, Thessalonians chapter number five and verses twenty three and twenty four, he said, "In the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly." I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Son, uh, 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 blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. And, and uh, uh, if you'd bow your head, we'd ask God's blessing on the word this morning. Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this wonderful privilege that we have. Once again, to be in the house of God, we thank you for each and every one, Lord, that's gathered out to the house of God this morning, Father. And Lord God, we pray for those that are not able to be here this morning, like uh, Brother Frankie and Sister Sherry, and others, Father, that are not able to be in the house of God, like Mama, Father, this morning, uh, whether she's on uh, sick or whether she's on a singing appointment, Lord, whatever the case might be, be with her, help her, and strengthen her. Heavenly Father God, I thank you, uh, Lord, this morning for the privilege and ability that I have to be back in the house of God. Thank you that you brought me through the surgery, that you helped me, Lord, you strengthened me, Father. And, and Father God, I pray that you would bless this word this morning that we that we've read and, and this subject, Father, that we have on our heart, that we feel like that you would have us to teach uh, and uh, preach from this morning. And Heavenly Father God, I pray that you bless each heart and meet each need and, and help me your servant, Lord. Lay your hands upon me, anoint me, strengthen me, Lord. And Heavenly Father, have your good will and way in all things. And whatever you do, Lord, we'll thank you and we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it all because you're worthy in Jesus' sweet and holy name. Amen and amen. And, and, and I'd like to go uh, uh, looking again in verse number at 23, he said, In the very God of, of peace, sanctify you wholly. And I'd like to preach to you this morning, just for a little while, on the subject of sanctification. And I, I, I'm going to have to take my time because of the, uh, the, the physical condition that I'm in, but I trust that the Lord will help me. And, and uh, I have quite a few scriptures and that I, wrote, I, I typed them out uh, that I want to cover this morning because I just didn't want to try to turn so many different places in the Bible and make it just as quick as I can this morning. But as I began to uh, meditate and think about uh, 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 upon this subject of, uh, of sanctification and began, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is such a thing as the law first mentioned in the Bible and we'll... Uh, we'll be touching on that in several different instances this morning. But if you want to understand and know uh, anything uh, uh, in the Word of God, uh, any subject in the Word of God, then it's best to go back to the first place that that subject is mentioned and, and begin there and come forward in the Word of God uh, as you study and as you read, uh, uh, my beloved, in, in understanding what God uh, has to say about uh, whatever subject that might be. Uh, as I began to uh, uh, look and, and to do a, a search of and, and, uh, the three main words in, under this topic of, uh, of sanctification, that is sanctify and sanctified and, and uh, sanctification, and I, I discovered that uh, 65 times in the Word of God, 
the word sanctified is given. Uh, 58 times in the word of God, uh, uh, my beloved friend, uh, the, uh, the, uh, or, or 65 times the word sanctified is given. Uh, and 58 times the word sanctified is given. Uh, and then five times the word uh, sanctification is given for a total of 138 times of that God had something to say, my beloved friend, in the Word of God about the subject of, of sanctification. And I believe, beloved friend, amen, if God put something in the Bible that many times, it's an important topic and it's something that we need to pay attention to and we need to understand and to learn, my beloved friend. Amen. That word sanctified, it means, my beloved friend, to purify or to make holy, or to set aside as for service. And there's several different ways that the Bible gives us several different kinds of sanctification that we can find subtopics in the Word of God. And the first one, my beloved friend, is the Lord. And the second one is people. And the third is places, and specifically, I believe, God's house. The fifth is things. And the, and the sixth is self, a, a sanctification, my beloved. Not self-righteous, but beloved friend, in obedience to the commands of the Lord and, the, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to go back, and, I, and the first place that we find my beloved friend, the word sanctify found in the word of God is in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 3. And this is when God has completed the six days of creation. And the Bible tells us, my beloved, in Genesis 2 and 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because of that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Bloody friend, that speaks to the reverence of, and the worship of God on the day that he set aside. Now you and I, as, as Brother Steve so aptly pointed out this morning, you and I, beloved, amen, we're not Jews. We're not living under the Old Testament economy. We're not living under the law, but we're living on grace. We are not, beloved, as the Seventh-day Adventists preach and teach today, amen, we are not uh, to keep, amen, a portion of the law, and we are not to worship on the Sabbath day and to keep the Sabbath day. But we have a different day, my beloved, amen, and, and, and it is the day, my beloved, of the Lord, the Lord's day, my beloved, and that's why, amen, that we are found in the house of God. And it speaks, my beloved friend, directly, amen, to us sanctified, or that is to respect, amen, the God of heaven. And Isaiah tells us in Isaiah, 8 and 13, he said, Sanctify uh, the Lord of hosts, uh, and let him be your fear, uh, and let him be your dread. A uh, uh, beloved friend, and, and that's uh, God said, uh, amen, that we are to sanctify him. Uh, that is, that we're to put him, uh, set him. Uh, he's the one that's supposed to be on the pedestal this morning. Uh, amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one. Uh, uh, my beloved friend, this morning, that, that, uh, that we uh, are supposed to be li uh, lifted. Up. He's the one, my beloved, amen, that's worthy of, of all the glory and the honor that we can give him. Why? Amen. Because of the great love, amen, wherewith he loved us, in that he came into this old uh, cruel world. Amen. He lived down here 33 and a half years, amen, sinlessly, and did what I could not do, and did what you could not do, and sin uh, lived a sinless life, and made his way up God, God this rugged Brown, and there bled and died for me and, and died for you on the cross of, of Calvary. And we are commanded, uh, amen, to sanctify him. Um, I listen, Peter, uh, and this is the command where he talks about, uh, amen, us being a light to others and testifying to others of what God uh, has done for us. But that uh, first Peter 3 and 15, uh, he said, sanctify the Lord God uh, in your heart uh, and be always ready uh, uh, to give an answer to every man uh, uh, and that asketh of you uh, of the hope that lieth uh, uh, within you. We need to let others know, uh, uh, my beloved friend, we need to let our light so shine before Amen. Amen. We need to lift up Jesus to this lost and dying world. And we need to let them know, 
I thank God that God, through Jesus Christ, my beloved friend, amen, he's the one that we give all glory and we give all honor and all praise to. What a blessing that he is. Well, I want to tell you, Jesus, uh, my beloved friend, in Matthew 6, uh, beginning in verse number 9, Amen. The Sermon on the Mount, and then again in Luke chapter 11. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, you've heard me talk a lot about this, my beloved friend. Uh, amen. Uh, how that, uh, you know, that what, what everybody refers to, uh, amen, as a Sermon on the Mount, God never intended, uh, amen, for you and I, my beloved friend, to, 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 uh, to give that by road or anything like that. Uh, amen. God never intended for us to, do, to use that in ceremonialism. But oh, listen, my beloved friend, in Luke chapter 11, uh, amen, they came to Jesus and say, they told him, I said, Lord, uh, uh, Jesus, teach us to pray uh, as John uh, taught his disciples. Uh, Jesus answered and said, when you pray, pray like this. What did he say to them? Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Till kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so on, my beloved friend. But the first thing that he said that you need to do when you go before God and you cry out to Him and you pray to Him and you recognize Amen, who and what He is. He's a holy God this morning. Amen. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. We need to recognize who and what He is, my beloved friend. Oh, what a blessing. But I want to tell you, He don't just stop there. Amen. Thank God. But He also, amen, sanctifies people. And by the way, amen, talking about, the, you see, the Lord even sanctifies Himself. Amen, my beloved friend. Amen, Jesus prayed. And my beloved friend in John chapter 17 and said, Father, amen, I sanctify myself. Amen, that, I, that they also have I be sanctified in me. Thank God. What a blessing that is. Well, I want to tell you, He's the one that came and bled and died for us on the cross of Calvary. Oh, listen, He sanctifies people the first place that you'll find that is in Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and verse number 2. And this is what, amen, uh, he said there, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Thank God, aren't you glad this morning that he sanctifies people? <laughs> amen. He makes people holy Amen. He purifies people, my beloved friend. Amen. He uh, declares holy. Amen. People, thank God, of what a blessing. And that's what He did for me. And that's what He did for you. Amen. When He saved us, have by His marvelous grace and washed us in His precious blood, thank God, He sanctified us. He declared us holy. He declared us righteous in the sight of God. What a blessing. And He set us apart and he made us mean for the master's use. Thank God. Thank God I can do what I do. And I am what I am, as Paul said. Amen. By the grace of God. And it's only by the grace. It's because of what Jesus did and not what I did or not what I can do. What a blessing that is. Oh, listen. He sanctifies people. He spoke to Moses and he said, sanctify Set aside for me the firstborn of whatsoever it be that opened the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast. Why was that? Amen. Because they represented, amen, the one that was to come. His only begotten son. Amen. His firstborn and that was going to come into this world and bleed and die on the cross of Calvary. And that we could be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. A saved by the grace of God and made righteous in the sight of God. What a blessing that is. Well, I want to tell you, he sanctifies people this morning and there's some religious groups as I've mentioned before here and not really got into great detail about it but there's some religious groups that they preach and they teach 
Amen. That sanctification is some a sort of extra benefit that you get by doing certain things. And my beloved friend, amen, apart from your salvation. And some of them, and my beloved, who are of the charismatic nature, say that the way that you get that is by being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I'll agree with that. Amen, beloved, if you're talking about when He baptizes you, amen, into the body of Christ and being evidenced how we're speaking in tongues and other side. I'm here to tell you, honey, that it ain't nothing, amen, further from the truth. Amen. The very middle of second. Amen. As I kneeled on my knees before Jesus Christ and cried out to Him for mercy and put my faith and my trust in Him. Amen. He gathered the blood of Jesus Christ that was applied to my heart and applied to my soul. Amen. And I was sanctified in the sight of God Almighty. And so were you, by the way. What a blessing that is. We're sanctified this morning. Amen. Not because for what we've done. Amen. Not because that we deserve it this morning. Amen. But we've been declared holy. How we've been purified. How we've been declared righteous this morning. And holy. And right in the sight of God. And because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. And because of that shed blood. That washed away our sin. Well, I want to tell you, He sanctifies people. Again, Jesus said, John 17, Father, I sanctify myself that they all also might be sanctified in me. What a blessing that is. Thank God I'm sanctified. Amen. Because He's sanctified. Amen. I'm holy because He's holy. I'm holy this morning. Amen. Because of what He did and not what I do. What a blessing that is. Yes. Thank God. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I but Christ liveth in me in the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Thank God I'm saved this morning because of what Jesus did. Amen. Not because of what Chris Christian did, does or can do. And, and so are you this morning. You're saved because of what Jesus did for you. Oh, what a blessing that is. He sanctifies people. I want to tell you, He does it, my beloved friend. Amen. I, I, I wrote it down as three ways, but you could break it down to four. But first of all, He sanctified us this morning, beloved, and sanctifies people by body, by His body, His broken body, and by blood. Hebrews 10 and 10 said by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Thank God, Hebrews 13 and 12, he said, Wherefore, uh, Jesus also, uh, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, uh, suffered uh, without the gate. What a blessing that is. Hebrews 10 and 14, he said, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. How, how long do you say it's going to last? <laughs> Amen. Brother, Brother Steve's done uh, checked, uh, uh, touched on it this morning. And, and we can go to our text verses this morning and we can see uh, again that he said in the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body uh, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, faithful is he that calleth you uh, who also uh, I will I do it. Uh, what a blessing that is. Hallelujah. I'm glad that sanctification is going to last forever. It's once for all. Well, I want to tell you, Jesus did, and my, my beloved friend, Jesus did something for me, uh, and He did something for you, my beloved friend. Uh, amen. That's not, uh, amen, uh, beloved friend, that's not limited, uh, amen, by man's ability or anything like that. Amen. It's eternal. What a blessing that is. And Jesus declared, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. 
My Father which giveth them me is greater than all. And no man shall be able, amen, to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And Brother Steve this morning in his lesson from the book of Galatians, amen, quoted to you John 3, 16. And I have to, I have to, amen, re-quote it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. What a blessing that is. I've got eternal life this morning. Yes. And if you're saved by the grace of God, you've got eternal life this morning. That beloved friend, amen. And I believe that it's going to last forever. And you can't lose it, my beloved. It's eternal, thank God. Amen. What a blessing that is. Brother Steve quoted for, and I'm not trying to, amen, replace anything Brother Steve said. Everything Brother Steve said this morning was right. Amen, I'm just going to augment it a little bit. Amen, Paul wrote those Galatian believers. And those Judaizers were coming in and telling them they had to be circumcised and keep the law. Paul told them, said, whosoever you have justified, by the law, you're falling from grace. Paul wasn't saying you had grace and you lost it. That, that's a wrong teaching. Amen. Paul said you missed the mark. If you are genuinely and truly depending on your work to get you to heaven, you ain't got the real thing. I want to tell you, if you're saved by the grace of God, it's not what you've done. It's not what you can do or will do. Amen. matter what you've not done. Amen. It's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for you. And you put your faith and your trust in Him. And that's the only thing you can do. Well, listen, my beloved friend, Hebrew, I mean, Romans rather 10. 8, 9, and 10. He said, The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth, the Lord of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. After with the heart that believeth under righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse number 13, the believe it was, he went on to say, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Well, I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, amen, we're sanctified. We're holy this morning. Thank God not in and of ourselves and not because of what we've done or can do, amen, but we're sanctified and because of what Jesus did and because of that shed blood and it's been applied to our heart and to our soul. I want to tell you, sanctifies you by the body and by the blood of Jesus. Then I want to tell you, he sanctifies by the word. Ephesians 5, 25 through 26, this is what Paul said. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Thank God. Well, listen, John 17 again. My beloved friend Jesus said, Father, amen, sanctify them through thy truth. And thy word is truth. Aren't you glad somebody delivered unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm glad that I had a mama that loved me, brought me up in the fear and admonition of the Lord and read to me from the Word of God and testified to me of, of the goodness of the Lord and the things of God. And not only that, but lived the life before me. And I thank God for every saint of God, amen, that ever stood and testified to me. And I love you, friends, every teacher, amen, that ever taught me from the Word of God. Every preacher, my beloved friend, and that ever stood under the anointing of God and preached to me the Word of God in power and in purity under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank God He sanctifies us by the Word. What a blessing that is. Oh, I want to tell you, this book will clean you up. I'm talking about if you get the real thing. No, you won't be perfect. Amen. 
Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, if you've been begotten by this work, and, amen, uh, again, uh, amen, 1 Peter 1 and 23, and, amen, Brother Steve quoted this morning, and, amen, uh, uh, the Bible said of his own will, uh, how he gave us, uh, how he bound uh, how the word of truth. Oh, listen, Paul wrote those Roman believers. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 15, he said, as much as in me now he is. He said, I'm now ready to preach the gospel to you there at Rome also. In verse number 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm going to tell you, amen, if our people are going to be saved, if our families are going to be saved, if our friends and our work fellows are going to be saved, they're going to have to hear the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God this morning. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, He sanctifies us by the Word. Not only that, amen, I'm going to move along as quickly as I can. He sanctified us by the Spirit. See, it all works together. Amen. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 6 and verse number 11. Now Paul, as he had just before this, he had told them, he said, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And he gave a long list, my beloved friend, amen, of the kinds of people, amen, that are not going to inherit of the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor abusers, nor effeminate, and nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor covetous, and nor extortioners, and all these things that he covered. But oh, thank God, in, in verse number 11, he said, in such words, some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Thank God we've been made holy this morning. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us, he said, by one Spirit. Amen. He baptized all of us into one body. What a blessing. that There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father who is above all and, and, and through all and in you all. And by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Thank God I'm glad tonight that I came and I bowed. And I put my faith and my trust in Him. Yes. God the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Brought that precious blood. Thank God and washed away my sin. And He indwelt me. He moved on the inside of me. And He's leading me and He's guiding me into all truths and paths of righteousness. Thank God I'm glad we're sanctified this morning. We're holy. Amen. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, not only does He sanctify, amen, His own name, His own self, not only does He sanctify people, beloved, but He sanctifies things and He sanctifies places. And the first place you'll find that is Exodus 19 and 23. And this is when they had, God was getting ready to give Moses those Ten Commandments that Brother Steve referred to this morning. Getting ready to go up on that mount. And God told them to put the barricades up to, uh, uh, according off the mountain. Amen. And, and, and we find here in, in, in Exodus 19 and 23, Moses said unto the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And that's the first mention in the Word of God, that He sanctifies a place. Amen? Amen. But in Exodus 24 and 36, He said, And thou shalt offer every day a bullock, for a sin offering, for atonement, and thou, sh and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and shalt anoint it to sanctify it. And then in Exodus 29 and 44, he said, And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons uh, to minister to me uh, in the priest's office. Amen. He sanctifies things. And he sanctifies places. I've told you before, my beloved friend, that 
This building is not the true church, and it's not. Amen. You and I, the individual members of the body of Christ, we are the church. This building is a place that the church meets, my beloved. Amen. To worship. But yet still, this place is sanctified. God has set it aside, my beloved, as a place that we might come and we might meet with Him. He sanctified these grounds. And the moment, my beloved, that you drive in through those gates, amen, and enter into this parking lot, amen, you are on holy ground. You are on ground that has been consecrated. You are on ground, my beloved, amen, that has been sanctified, that has been set apart, amen, and made me for the Master's use. When we get come and we gather around this altar, my beloved, you're coming to a holy place. You're coming to a sanctified place. Amen. God sanctifies His house. His house is a holy place. That's why we need to be careful. Amen. What we say and what we do in the, in the house of God because this is a holy place. Yes, oh, remember, my beloved friend, when Jacob, uh, amen, when he was fleeing from the wrath of his brother, uh, and he saw and he went, uh, and I beloved, and he went down to Bethel, uh, amen, and he took the stones of that place uh, for his pillows, uh, amen, and he saw a vision in the night. Uh, Amen. And he saw an angel set up, or he saw a ladder rather set up between earth and heaven, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And God spoke to him from the top of the ladder. Amen. Uh, uh, bloody friend Jacob woke up and he said, This is none other than the house of God, and this is none other than the gate of heaven. And he said, I knew it not. Oh, I want to tell you, it was a holy place. It was a place that Jacob, and that's what Bethel means. Amen. It means house of bread, and it also means house of God this morning. Oh, I want to tell you, this is a place that we come to meet with our Lord. And I know that we can speak to Him, my beloved, any time that we want to because He's living in our heart. I know that His ear is ever a ten entire prayer. But my beloved friend, this is a local assembly. Amen. That God has set aside and that we might come down and we might meet with Him and commune, commune with Him. And God has sanctified this place. Amen. That woman of Samaria that met Jesus at the well, she told Jesus, said, Now you Jews, you say we're supposed to worship down there in Jerusalem. But she said, our fathers tell us that we are supposed to worship in this mountain. Jesus said, you worship, you know not what? We know what we worship. Salvation is of the Jews. But he said, I'm telling you that the time is coming when they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And he said, you're not going to worship Him at Jerusalem and you're not going to worship Him on this mountain. I want to tell you where God wants us to worship Him. Yeah, He wants us to worship Him every day, but our special place of worship is in our local assembly. It's in the church, my beloved friend. That's why He commanded us in Hebrews 10 and 25, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see, the day approaching. Not less and less like we're seeing in the day and age we're living in. But he said more. Amen. I want to tell you, honey, hey man, if we're able, and God understands, I mean, if we're genuinely sick or hindered, hey amen, God knows all about it and he understands and he don't hold, us, hold it against us. But if we're able, hey amen, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, if our church is having church, we need to be in the house of God. I want to tell you something. Hey Amen. I don't say a whole lot about it. I don't say as much as I used to. There's three things that my wife told me I hammered on too much when I was pastor of Riverside. One of them was church attendance in general. The other one was coming to Sunday school and the other one was tithing. So I don't, I don't say much about it very often. But I can tell you right now, if you just come a little bit earlier, hey Amen. Brother Steve would appreciate it. And I'd appreciate it if you're able Amen. The Lord will appreciate it this morning. Amen. 
Thank God you see Brother Steve's got a job to do too, just like I do. You've got a job to do too, just like we do. Thank God we need to be found in the house of God. Oh, I want to tell you, he sanctified this place. He sanctified this altar. And I want to tell you something. I'm glad I've got a sanctified book this morning. Thank God I'm glad I've got the real and genuine word of the living God. And then I think I, I thank God that I've got the word uh, that sanctifies this morning. Amen. I believe I, I, I trust. Amen. And I believe. And I know all the evidence and I believe that too. But beyond that, I trust and I believe. Amen. That I've got the pure word of God and I've got every bit of it this morning. Thank God I'm glad that it's able to sanctify us. Amen. Then I'm going to give you the last thing. Amen. We'll come to a close here in just a minute. But now let me back up just a little bit. Now I want to give you one more verse on sanctifying the place. Amen. This is found in 2 Chronicles 29, verse number 5, and it's after that. Uh, there had been an evil king and a whole series off and on of evil kings. All of them in Israel were evil. But uh, in, 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 in Judah, uh, they had good kings and they had evil kings. And Hezekiah's father had been an evil king. But, oh, Hezekiah <coughs> ordered his heart aright before the Lord. And he reopened the house of God. And the Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 29 and 5, talking to the priests of the Levites, Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, and he said unto them, Hear me, you Levites, sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry the filthiness out of the holy place. I want to tell you this is a holy place. Amen. This is a place chosen by God. And we need to be careful, my beloved, of, amen, how we conduct, conduct ourselves, amen, in this place. And that we hold the right stand. They're not popular today. I want to tell you, if you hold right standards in the house of God in your life, amen, you hold right standards of living, I'm not talking about trying to live right to be saved. Amen. But, but living right because that you are saved. Amen. And conducting yourself right. Amen. In the house of God. Amen. In such a way that will honor it. It's not popular in this day and age that we're living in. But King Hezekiah told the, the Levites, he said, first sanctify yourself. Then I want you to sanctify the house of God, His altar. And He said, I want you to carry the filthiness out of the house of God. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, this needs to be a clean place. It's a holy place. Yes, amen. God sanctified it. Amen. Then I want to tell you, my beloved friend, amen, uh, 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 we have uh, examples in the Word of God of people sanctifying themselves. Amen. I'm not talking about Amen. Self-righteousness and holier than thou. And God said that's a stink in my nostrils. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being what you're supposed to be. I'm talking about following the dictates of the Word of God. Amen. Living a life according to the best of your ability. According to the standards of God. You see, God, amen, declared you holy. God sanctified you positionally. And me positionally, and now he expects us to live that life, my beloved friend, that uh, live what has been done to us on the inside. Leviticus 11 and 44, he said, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourselves. Leviticus 20 and 7, he said, Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Then 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 4, Paul told the Thessalonian believers this. He said, This is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, and that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification. And in honor. God said, I've done it for you. 
I have made you holy. I have sanctified you. I have washed your sins away. I have guaranteed you a home in glory by and by. And I have given you the righteousness of my darling son through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary and through that new bird. Through my precious word and through God the Holy Ghost, you've been sanctified. You've been declared holy. You've been declared righteous. And you have been set apart and made need for my use. Now live that life that I've given you. We're to follow Him. We're to do what He would have us to do. Amen. We're, we're, we're to live according to the dictates of this book this morning. Amen. Thank God what a blessing that is. Not, not to be saved. Not to stay saved. But because we are saved. By the grace of God. If any man be in Christ, he is right now, present tense, a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have been made new. Thank God. I'm glad he made me a new creation in Christ. And no, we're not going to be able. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. We're not going to be able to live perfect lives. But oh, thank God. I'm glad that we've got somebody. Amen. That we can live. Paul said the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He lives through us. Thank God. What a blessing that is. I hope I've been able to make